All right, guys, we're out in the shop. Better turn the heat up, it's cold in here. We got a new tool in the shop today. I'm excited to try this thing out. Bought this tool in hopes to help make my little turbo kits and stuff that I do on my cars here. Hopefully make them look a little nicer. Like I've said a million times, I am not a fabricator. I'm a functionicator, fun functionator. My stuff functions, that's it. That's all I can say, it's, it's functional. I try and make everything function before I care about form. I ordered this the other day and I really want to try it out. A lot of my turbo kit stuff, depending on um, budget, a lot of my turbo kit stuff comes from eBay. My piping kits come from eBay nowadays. Um, one of the suppliers that I used to use, they're currently, um, I won't say that they're out of business, but they're currently not working. Um, they're building a new facility and not selling any products. So I've been buying cheap kits online and trying to make those work and uh, buying cheap tools as well. That is a Scotch-Brite pad. And with that comes this. This is a tubing sander. And I've seen some guys use these. I found it on eBay. And I've seen some guys use some of the eBay ones, the Amazon ones. And uh, is there a direction on this? Doesn't look like it. Um, and I really just want to try one out. Like I said, I hope, or my hope was that it would give me a little bit better finish. Um, weird. First thing, it comes with a belt. And I'm pretty sure it said to use a certain belt length and that's what I got. But with this belt, you can see right here, it's like dragging on this guard right here. But with the other belt, it didn't. And a lot of it's probably because this belt's actually really thick since it's Scotch-Brite. I mean, it's essentially the same belt, but this one's thin. Because if I put this one on, it didn't appear to do that. But it felt like it had more tension on it too. Yeah, see now this one, it doesn't contact the guard. You can see the gap there in the guard. Right here, right here. So, it doesn't really look like there's an adjustment on the guard. So I may just have to maybe trim this guard up a little bit so it doesn't drag on this Scotch Bright belt. But we are going to grab a couple test pieces and uh, see if we can sand on them and see what kind of finish we get on the aluminum and on the stainless. So let me grab a couple pieces here. This is one of the pieces of stainless that came from the turbo kit on the Bel Air project I've been working on. And it's actually already super shiny. And I'm honestly not a big fan of the shiny, super shiny finish. Um, but let's uh, fire this thing up. This is the, the green super fine, or the not super fine, the green fine. But if you look, can you see the shiny? And then now it's more of like a brushed stainless look. That to me looks way better. So I like that. Um, I like that a lot actually. Man, it's gonna look really good. I do wanna test it and do, um, maybe I'll cut a couple small sections and then weld some section with the polished finish and then weld some sections with the brush finish or the sanded finish. And just to see what the weld looks like and the coloring and stuff like that. Um, but let's do that on a, on a piece of aluminum as well. So here's some of the shiny aluminum that I use. This one I was actually messing with some uh, welding 
I, I was having some some issues. You can see some like test welds and stuff and I was doing a couple of test beads. But uh, let's see what it looks like on this. It's kind of hard to do like this. I really like this. And as you can see here, super shiny and sanded. And it just has like a like a brushed aluminum look to it, which I really like. But yeah, like I said, I, I really wanna see um, kind of what the, the finish ends up looking like whenever I start welding on these pieces. I think it'll be, I think it'll be pretty neat. I'll cut up some pieces and then we'll do some test welds. I kind of see like a before and after kind of you know, if you were to get a piece of this aluminum or something like that, buy it, cut it, weld it, what it looks like, what the finish looks like versus when you prep it, with say a sanding, a tube sander, and then re-weld and kind of see what the finish looks like then. So let me get some of that stuff ready and we'll get back to you, show you what we got. All right, so we got a piece of the polished tubing welded and then a piece of the sanded, don't mind the scratches, that was for me clamping onto it and then a piece of the sanded aluminum. Which one do you like better? Obviously it's really hard to tell, but like, I feel like if you had a full kit where all the tubing was sanded like that, I feel like it would look extra good. You know, sitting in an engine bay, that nice sanded finish on it versus in an engine bay with this polish. I don't know, I mean, maybe I'm just, expect them too much but i feel like the the sanded stuff just looks a little cleaner than say like the polished i i, I personally like raw aluminum that's not polished at all um but when i buy these kits they come polished so then if i could just go through and sand it all i feel like that's a it's a cool finish let me know what you guys think let me know which one you like better um you know it may be something we have to see on a car like a complete kit, a polished versus the sanded. Change out my tip and my gas lens over to my FUPA 12. One thing I will add, I change the belts based on what material I'm sanding. Cause I don't want to sand stainless and then try and sand aluminum with the same belt. Cause then you'll end up impregnating the aluminum with stainless dust. So I marked the so I marked the belt, aluminum, and then the other one stainless. That way I don't sand and cross contaminate um, the material that I'm trying to sand and then weld on. Just a little food for thought, but. All right, so I realized that it looked kind of funny with that one pipe being not completely polished. So I went through and just repolished over the whole thing, just tried to stay away from the weld. And uh, definitely, as you can tell there, that's a looks, way better i like i like this look way better one thing i was doing is i was like sanding back and forth back and forth back and forth and you actually just need to make like one small you know like across and back across and back instead of trying to like move around on it because then you get like weird cross hatches on it and it looks way better with like a uniform brush stroke over the whole pipe yep dig that a lot all right now let's see what the stainless does all right so we got our pieces all welded up we got the aluminum welded up we got the stainless welded up and i cut them and tried to make them like the same height and stuff and make sure the welds were about the same level that way you get a little bit better comparison kind of the side by side of what these things look like so uh let's show you the aluminum all right so there's your aluminum definitely a nice little comparison this the the polish doesn't look terrible it's just not my favorite um i kind of I, I i say kind of i really like the brushed aluminum look of it. And, uh, but yeah, let me know what you guys think. Which one do you like better? Brushed aluminum or the polished? And now let me show you the stainless. And there's your two pieces of stainless. This would be a raw unfinished piece of stainless here versus the sanded stainless with the belt sander. Um, this piece actually started out as a polished piece and uh, I didn't have any short sections of the polish that I could make, you know, kind of the same height. So I grabbed this, um, the raw finish, but essentially this raw finished stainless will look just like this if I sanded it. 
but it looks pretty good. Definitely, definitely a cool little comparison. This will look way cleaner, way more uh, professional in an engine bay, even though my welds suck, versus something like this where the stainless has got lines in it and it's very raw and crude. But definitely uh, the stainless look brushed and then the aluminum look brushed to me looks way better. But, but yeah, let me know what you think. Which ones do you like better? Um, what do you think would look better on your project? And uh, I think this is what I'm gonna do. I think I'm gonna, because it is time consuming, you know, if you go through and you're building a turbo kit and you do that to every piece of tubing, whether it be intercooler tubing or whatever, um, it is time consuming. So that may be something I have to charge a little bit more to do. You know, if somebody's like, hey, I want it to look like this, this is what it costs, or if they don't want it, or if I should just do it to all of them, no matter what, they all look the same and you don't get that option. What do you think I should do there? Is that something I should do? Is it worth charging more for? Or should I just change the price of building a turbo kit for somebody and just assume that I'm gonna do that to every one of them? The Vivor, V, Vever, Polisher, Sander, definitely gonna be a huge, huge upgrade to trying to make my turbo kits look a little nicer and a little bit better quality finish on them. But uh, definitely check it out. If you guys do this stuff at home, that's one of them tools that you should have. Um, you gotta clean the material anyways whenever you're sanding it, and, or you gotta clean the material anyways whenever you go to weld it. Um, you might as well do that, it's faster. Uh, probably get a much cleaner finish on it than saying, you know, just hand scotch brighten it and stuff, which I've done for years and it's got me by. Um, but I think this option is gonna be way much more gooder than previous options. But that's gonna do it for today's video. A little short uh, fab video and a product review of the Vivor, v I don't know how you said it, Vever um, tubing sander. I'll put a link to that down in the description below. And uh, anyways, it's gonna do it for this video, guys. Thanks for watching, keep following. We'll see you on the next one.